Hello everyone, it's still Saturday, but I have read my third book for the Med Month Book Bash, and so I thought I would come to you in my onesie pajamas uh, to tell you about it before I try and get to bed early so I have two nights to adjust to the time change rather than Monday being a hot mess. So basically, I opened a new account for myself on NetGalley, and I only requested two books. I just reviewed one of them earlier today, which makes um, me have 50% for like the um, number that I have reviewed, the percent that I have reviewed. And that is amazing because that is not the norm for me. And so with that being said, um, the other book is one that I'm going to get a signed copy of through the Parnassus' first edition book club. And I already know that's one that I am going to get to just because of the signed copy arriving to my house. Um, and so because my stat or whatever is higher, I went online and I did decide to request a few more books. Uh, not too many <laughs> because I uh, don't want my stat to fall again. Um, but I did request one per month through like July or something. Like I requested a few more. But anyway, one of the books that I saw and I was like, oh my gosh, I started freaking out about. I realized was one that you could just read right now without even asking permission um, to get it. And it was called Unmasking Alice. So here's the thing. This is nonfiction. I think it has a rather niche audience. Um, but here's what it is. Basically, um, Heather from Soggy Expat Book Nerd back in the day made this video about her first time reading Go Ask Alice and her reaction to it. Now, as an adult, she had a very different reaction than I had as a child who ate that book up and thought it was like, the best thing. I loved reading about messed up kids back in the day, apparently. Um, and what I did not realize until I started reading this book, uh, which is on my Kindle, is basically that the Go Ask Alice book was also connected to all these other diaries that I just ate up as a kid that were always edited, edited by Beatrice Sparks. Um, and so that was a huge section of my childhood reading books about messed up teenagers. And so I come to the book today called Unmasking Alice, which is apparently about the truth behind the Go Ask Alice books and also all the other diaries um, that Beatrice Sparks edited. Basically, um, the story I heard from Heather's channel was that Beatrice Sparks was like this Mormon housewife who basically wanted to make sure that kids didn't get into trouble. And so she wrote this book pretending to be a teenager um, that tried to teach the lesson of don't do drugs. Bad things will happen. Don't do drugs. Okay. Um, Heather, I'm sorry, but your story is wrong because this book like unleashes the whole truth um, behind Beatrice Sparks. And essentially, the woman is a con artist. <laughs> Beatrice Sparks grew up and had a hot mess of a childhood. Um, her mom was taking her to older uh, kids somewhere, and she basically went into labor um, with her water breaking on the train. She apparently left the two children with somebody on the train and told them like to take care of them and uh, she would meet them at this one station. And the mom just got off at the next station, leaving her kids to like carry on with the rest of their train journey while she gave birth on the side of the railroad tracks in a tent. And the baby that was born before she met up with her kids again, as she promised she would, was Beatrice. So Beatrice, her life was a hot mess from like day one. And most people think that story actually was true. Um, she kind of had this, this is where I came from. I pulled myself up from my bootstraps and you should be able to too. What's wrong with you if you can't? Mentality. Um she went on and she ended up getting married when she was like 19 years old. Meanwhile, I think her mom had had a bunch of other kids 
and ended up um, getting a divorce from Beatrice's dad, which was super shady back then because they were in this Mormon community. Nobody got a divorce. Like it was like 2% of the population in the United States at that time uh, had gotten a divorce at one point in their life, but in her town, 0%. So it was already super shady that her mom got a divorce. Um, granted, Beatrice was older, like I said, but anyway, her mom ended up finding another guy and um, the younger kids, she sent them to an orphanage. She just ditched them. <laughs> So this is just a huge scandal, right? Um, Beatrice ended up kind of rescuing her siblings and taking them in. She didn't even know they were at an orphanage right away. Um, she probably would have taken them in from day one, uh, but she raised them. She had a bunch of other babies, blah, 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 blah. Nobody really cares, right? Nobody cares. Um, but what we do care about is this whole story of Go Ask Alice and the journals that followed. Even though Beatrice was married, they had no money, they were dirt poor, and they ended up moving to like this Mormon area in Utah when everyone was into direct sales, which I think people still are in that area. Um, and she ended up getting involved in this really shady record company where you would sell records to people, but like the records hadn't even ever been made. And um, I think that she was in charge of like writing like sales stuff for the records so that they like people would want them like a little blurb about what the records would entail. So she was already in shady business with that. It was a hot mess. Uh, but she just kept getting herself in these like con artist sort of situations um, and finally ended up writing um a journal about a teen that gets into drugs and all this stuff and um basically what the book was saying is that go ask alice was a complete fabrication she wrote it all herself she um she didn't really completely write it herself because to make it look like it was actually a journal like she kind of had it all clipped up and put in a paper bag and gave it to this person so that actually they put together the article or the book and she was just like a courier. Her name did not even end up on the first book, eh, which was so much drama, she was always mad about it, um, but she ended up writing a series of other journals, which started when this guy named Jay, or that wasn't his real name actually, but the book that I'm talking about is called Jay's Journal. His life was a hot mess as a teenager. His mom basically wrote to, um, Beatrice Sparks to be like, hey, here's what happened to my son. I don't want other kids to have the same experience. I don't want their parents to suffer in the way we have suffered. Can you please do for his journal what you did for Go Ask Alice? Um, and Beatrice Sparks said that she would. She um, told them that she would communicate with them before the book came out. But one day the parents just found it in a bookstore. She did not communicate with them that the book was coming out. And when they actually read it, it was full of misinformation, not even misinformation, but just lies. Um, she did use some of the son's journal entries, but the majority of them were completely made up, completely made up and just went into a whole bunch of stuff that had never even happened. She started discussing witchcraft and all these other bad things. And like, that was nothing to do with the real story at all. Um, and the parents were kind of like too distraught and like, I, they didn't really address it in the way they should have legally. Um, and so Beatrice Sparks went on to write loads of other stuff. Um, and basically, along the way she's just completely lying like her lies don't even make sense and she doesn't even stick to the same story all the time as far as like like how long after alice's last journal entry did she pass away how did she get the journal um from alice's family um the story about jay there was all these uh things that were like 
in some situations she would say something in some other situations she would say something completely different she told the family like one time that it was based only on his journal entries and then another time that it was actually like kind of a collaboration of like his um journal entries and like three other youth that she knew really well so it was just really interesting i guess to hear about this author whose stuff I sucked up as a square, innocent child um, and turned out to be a complete con artist that my mom paid money to, obviously, when she bought the books. So again, niche audience for this book. You can read it in a single afternoon and eat it up if you want drama about the books that you read as a kid. Um, there were some parts I felt dragged on a bit and could have hurried up a bit. Uh, but besides that, I would say if you read any of these edited by Beatrice Sparks books, uh, you might be interested in this one, just uncovering the truth about your childhood favorites. Uh, so yeah, I'm not tired for bed. I was going to try and go to bed like right now, but I'm not tired. Um, I will see you guys later and hopefully I read more books tomorrow.